What the monastery shows every Christian are the ingredients of the, of the Christian life. You cook with a different recipe when you have a different vocation, but the ingredients are the same. And the ingredients are primacy of God. The ingredients are regular prayer, uh, dry or warm, regular prayer. The ingredients are fraternal charity in the extreme. <laughs> and the ingredients are hospitality, that is openness to the stranger. Those are the ingredients of any Christian life and you will cook up the cake differently depending on your vocation, but it, those tastes will be in every Christian life. There was a beautiful Catholic school in our town and I would say that really marked me in a big way. We were uh, trained by Ursuline nuns and we loved them and we had a great pastor. He inspired us to a love of the liturgy and to a very serious approach to Catholic life. Uh, when I was in, the, I think in the sixth grade, my best friend uh, knew about a summer camp here at the Abbey uh, and he wanted to come because he wanted to be a priest when he grew up. That wasn't in my head. And um, so his parents talked to my parents and said, could the two of them go together? We'd be glad to bring him. And so we came and uh, I really loved it and he didn't. So <laughs> that's how God got me onto the property. Uh, and it stayed in the back of my head. And uh, when it came time to go to high school, I remember really wanting to come here. There was a high school seminary here at the time. And it was just, I wasn't thinking so hard about being a priest as much as just coming to this place. I loved this place. I loved the atmosphere of the monastery and all that. And then I went to seminary here for eight years, high school and college. And uh, after, it, by, by that time I had absorbed what monastic life is and, uh, and wanted to be a monk. So, what was the life of the monastery? And above all their prayer, I was so impressed to see them coming into church every day and praying, the bells ringing and all that. But then I met the monks. The monks were, were with us in the, in the summer camp and uh, they were just great men. I just thought, what wonderful men, you know? And then as a student, uh, the majority of my teachers were monks and I, but they were such great mind expanding kind of teacher. I learned more and realized all of this is part of the Benedictine tradition. People think you leave the world when you join the monastery. You actually join it. You join humanity. Uh, you join it at a depth you wouldn't have imagined. Uh, you join it by seeing your strengths and weaknesses and you're very close to the strengths and weaknesses of others. Being a monk teaches you what we're dealing with here. What is human nature? And it's, uh, it's something splendid and dangerous. You try to learn from the great wisdom that's in our monastic tradition. You try to um, maneuver through the dangers. You ask me what kind of a man that life has made me. It's just let me go very deeply into the Christian mysteries. And it really means that you can put to death in yourself, sin, and you can live a new life that is joined and has the power of his resurrection in it. And that's the pattern of every Christian life. And in the monastery, you're meant to live that in almost like an iconic kind of way. The world doesn't need uh, something new. The world needs what it's always needed. And that's uh, the gospel in, in Jesus Christ. Our culture at large is, uh, is attending, giving attention to that less and less. And we live in a very troubled world. You, know, you hear people saying things like, you know, why doesn't God help? Why didn't God do something? And the answer to that is, he has done everything already in Christ. It's all posited. It's all here. What's needed is on the planet. 
and it's, a, and it's in people's living hearts as faith. It's here. So it needs to be reproposed. If people don't like old stuff, then don't tell them it's old, but propose it. You know What's going on in a monk's life and heart is a hidden reality. But you, you can see uh, by the fact that we, we welcome people to this place where we do this, you can see that uh, we are, that what we're doing for the praise of God and for our own personal conversion, uh, we do, among other things, uh, to witness to the primacy of God. You know, people will come and, and somehow our life provokes the question, what are they doing? Why are they doing that? So the tradition of our seminary, in fact, uh, is a, and the and the priests that we form there to be out in the world, are being formed by this particular Benedictine atmosphere and tradition and way, and so in that way the monk's life goes out all over the life of the church. It's a huge change in my life. You say yes uh, because. Uh, of the process that led us up to the election. Uh, and, uh, intense prayer and also intense discernment in, in, the, in the discussions of the community. The election of an abbot is uh, nothing political about the process. Uh, in a political process, somebody wants to be elected and does whatever it takes to, you know. So the, 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 it's, it's very hard to find somebody that wants to be elected abbot. Monks believe that an election is the way the Holy Spirit manifests God's choice. Monks prepare themselves to vote according to their conscience, which is formed by their monastic vows and by their life together and by their bonds in the community. And I said, you know, don't elect me, I'm doing these other things. And people agreed with that. Uh, I'm not, I don't think I would have been elected before anyway, but people were very happy with, the monastic community was happy with what I did in Rome. Um, and uh, I think they still were, but they asked me anyway. And so uh, that's something that somebody who's trying to be obedient to the will of God has to say yes to whether he likes it or not and trust that uh, he will be sustained in that. You know, when the monks elect an abbot and God's will is manifested in that way, there's nothing magical about that in the sense that uh, they're electing me uh, and they know what I am and what I can do and what I can't do. So I love the monastic life and I love my community. I will live the life together with them. I'm just going to try to pass on to young and old alike uh, what God has made me to be in these 43 years of being a monk. I don't have uh, strong administrative skills or experience, so I will rely on monks who do. And I hope that uh, my experience as a teacher uh, can can serve the community, uh, but can also serve the shaping of the vision for the whole place. Uh, an abbot, in fact, is going to look at the new monks coming in and see what kind of guy is that? What could he do? What could he be trained to do? Because he's going to be here, we hope, for the rest of his life. And I'm not distressed about lacking the kind of talent I need. But I love, I love teaching and I love our seminary apostolate. I believe in it completely and uh, how I've, I've spent my, my life uh, working in it. It's a passion and I want to also as abbot to make a sign to the seminary and to my own monastic community. Well, here's our principal apostolate. And here's the abbot getting dirty too. I said it's a wonderful way of uh, involving the monastery in the life of the diocesan church without leaving the monastery. All our vocations in the monastery used to be local in the sense of Pacific Northwest, but now they come from all over.
which is trickier managing the discernment, but it's an enrichment. And that's being Catholic. The, the families would always come back year after year, so I'm watching all these people grow up, you know, and, um, and then they were still coming as young adults. So they said, you know, we want to we don't want the we don't want our parents there, but we want to have a talk with you. I wrote my doctoral thesis on a fourth-century Egyptian monk mm -hmm. uh, named Evagrius, who in fact is an extremely pivotal figure in the whole development of monastic spirituality. So he's a big influence on my life, and his context is the Egyptian desert monasticism. Benedict refers us to the period that I specialized in, the ancient, uh, what for him was ancient monasticism. Mm -hmm. It ought to be yeah. possible for any serious Catholic to understand the Mass or anything of our faith at depth without having to become a theologian. God wouldn't set it up that way.